We already looked at what I call the traditional or purists relational database model, which is basically referencing the customer by his name, referencing the invoice by the composite, and referencing the invoice item by a composite of three. Look at this table. The primary key has three columns. There are only two columns in this table which are not part of the primary key. In other words, reading the index is essentially slower than reading the non-keyed table items. That's not a good situation. How do we resolve this? We use what is called a surrogate key. A surrogate key is a replacement. Typically, a surrogate key is actually a unique integer identifier generated internally. I'm going to change this and make this the primary key. What have I done? I've shifted the customer name out of the primary key box and put a new value in. Typically, customer ID is actually an internally generated sequence number, an integer. It's much faster to read integers than read names. Customer names could be 64, 128 characters long. The customer ID is only a couple of bytes. Much quicker to read an integer valued ID in the index. What I've actually done here as well was previously this would actually have been what's called an identifying relationship. So this is how it would be structured. And I would have to go to here as well and make sure this is structured properly as well so we can see what's going on. You can now see that the customer ID has been passed into the invoice table and the invoice item table. Let's do one more thing. Let's go to here and let's go and create an invoice ID column. It's not strictly necessary for this table because it's likely that the invoice number is going to be useful as a primary key. However, it's not internally generated. So therefore, we would use a surrogate key, uniquely identifying every element in this invoice table regardless of the customer ID. Therefore, this customer ID does not need to be part of the primary key. Going into here, as you can see, I actually can't change it. I can't change it to not be a primary key. The only way to do it is to actually change the relationship. It needs to be non-identifying, which is what I had set just now. What that means is that the invoice, in other words, the invoice primary key, the surrogate key, the value uniquely identifying each invoice, regardless of customer, is not dependent on customer ID. In other words, you don't count each invoice up within the customer. So customer A would have invoice 1 to 10, customer B would have invoice 1 to 10, etc, etc. The invoice IDs are actually unique. They're 1 to 10 for customer A, and then 11 to 20 for customer B, etc, etc. There's no dependence there. Well, there is, but it's not a direct relationship. It's an indirect or a non-identifying relationship. One is not identified by the other. Note that the invoice ID has been passed down the chain into the invoice item. The only situation where we wouldn't have a unique identifying number is on the invoice item because it's not really necessary and also the invoice items generally count within the invoice. 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10 for each invoice. Different to this relationship. This is a first normal form master detail relationship and this is actually a second normal form essentially transactional static data relationship. Surrogate keys supply a method of speeding up key access and uniquely identifying keys for each entity. Typically, these types of structures are used in data warehouses where you could have multiple data sets coming from multiple sources. Quite often, data warehouses are built from different departments in the same company and even data sources from outside the company purchased data sets or even entire databases. The problem that happens then is that your unique values are not unique because different departments could have the same customers but they could spell the customer name differently, some could abbreviate, some could not, some may put dots in the abbreviations. See the point, you could have unique identifiers that are actually not unique identifiers. With the data warehouse, when you suck all the data in from different sources, you need to create a data warehouse specific ID. Surrogate keys are nearly always used in data warehouses. However, nowadays in applications where objects overlay relational database structures, quite often surrogate keys are used for those types of applications as well. In an object structure, 
every element within that object, in the case of a relational database and entity, such as the customer, every object is actually uniquely determined not across the table, but across the entire data structure, the entire data set, the entire database. The customer ID uniquely identifies the customer within all tables across the database based on the fact that it's related to the customer and every customer has a unique ID. It's kind of a customer and customer ID unique object ID within the customer table effectively because it's unique within the customer table. It's unique across the entire set of tables.